the thing, the torture. What happened yesterday? We were traveling. They were traveling yesterday? We were. were. You oh, we were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you were, were you traveling yesterday? Yes. Oh, yes. oh too. Yes. All right. We were. Well, how nice to see both of you gentlemen, and uh, especially under these happy circumstances, uh, the kickoff of The Empire Strikes Back. Gary, you and I met uh, when Star Wars came out, and of course, no one could possibly have suspected or imagined, dared to dream the impossible dream of such a fabulous success. What is it now, $500 million gross? Something like that, yes. Something like that. Worldwide. Realistically, can you expect to do that much business with this one? It's really hard to tell. The, how a picture does, aside from whether it's good or not, depends somewhat on the mood of the country at the time, the competition, the weather, whether people want to go to the cinema or not and so many other variables that all you can do is say we think this is as good as we can make it and uh, let the audience come and see it. There always will be some fans out there and it's just over and above that hardcore group that you have no idea of how to predict. If we could predict it, why well, we would have a long time ago and only made successful pictures, but it doesn't happen that way. But the point is that many people went to see it time and time and time again and I, I wonder really if they will do that with this one, or if as many people will do that? Well, that's the part that's hard to predict, but in some ways I think that this picture provides the same kind of emotional experience and uh, the environment, as it were, in the theater, the sound and the picture creating the mood and the atmosphere that, that is, is what they want to see when they come back again. When they come back the third and fourth time, you know they're not coming to see the story, they're coming to experience it again and we tried in this picture uh, to achieve the same result. You have many more and, and a number of new effects and special things in this one. I was totally fascinated by Tauntaun. How does that work? Well, the Tauntaun is a, is a mammal that runs around in the snow. and the, We had full-sized ones, eight feet tall, that the actors had, uh, were able to climb on and we had uh, miniature ones that were done by stop-motion animation. But uh, I think that they're fairly well integrated, so it's sometimes hard to tell which is which. Was there a body inside Tauntaun? No. No. no it's all mechanical. All mechanical. And was it I difficult for Mark Hamill to ride Tauntaun? <laughs> no. No, he just practiced a while, that's all. You're, you're laughing, Kirsch. Mm -hmm. Why are you laughing? Well, when you said difficult for him to ride it, I can just imagine Mark Hamill on this beast running across the snowy wastes. Yeah. Um, it's not quite done that way, but uh, as long as the illusion is there, that's, that's what makes us happy. I was laughing because I was pleased with your question. <laughs> <laughs> the best special effects are those that you don't notice, that, that just work for and you. And most of the, many of the special effects, I'd say over half the special effects in this picture people are not even aware of as being special effects. They think the special effects are uh, the spaceships in space or, a thing, or uh, bolts of lasers tearing through the, the atmosphere. Uh, that's only the, the, uh, the surface of the special effects. The, there's so much going on that you just accept. That's all special effects. And it's this integration of special effects and the characters uh, which is part of telling the story that really makes the whole thing work and makes it look effortless. If you were aware of the special effects, it wouldn't be effortless, it would be mechanical. And to make it mechanical is very easy. To make it smooth and effortless is very difficult. And uh, we achieved somewhat uh, pretty good results, uh, if you can ask these questions. You said something that there was no logical way to explain the success of Star Wars. And I'd like to ask you what you mean about no logical way to explain it. Well, Gary started to say that. He says there are so many variables that determine the mood or needs or desires of an audience. An audience is, is, is not one human being, and yet uh, it all has something in common. There is a tone that's right for each period. There is a temperament that seems to, to, uh, to be promulgated, that's in the air. And uh, if you tap into this, 
this force, if you want to use the word, then the picture becomes very, uh, very popular. Um, but logically, uh, I don't think anybody can ever determine what's going to be successful. Uh, the thing that I love about this picture is the fact that it is not logical. And that's why I think people in many countries can experience it. Because um, they're experiencing something that, that is cross-cultural. Uh, it's, the, it's the common dream that they're experiencing. If you come from a highly technological society, or if you come from a very primitive society, the thing that you have in common is that you all dream uh, from childhood on. And those dreams carry over into your everyday life. And a really exciting story often has dreamlike qualities where taboos are considered okay to experience. Where, uh, you can, where you can go places where in your real life you would never go. Where you can feel things that in your real life you have no chance to, to feel or experience. And this is extra logical. This is not thinking things through and saying, well, this means so and so and this is why this happens. It goes beyond that. It goes really into the realm of the unconscious. It goes into the fairy tale, into the story. Uh, and it goes back into prehistory the elements that you try for in a good story. People are talking about the ending. Some people say that, uh, you know, it, it, it just jarred them a little bit or it what didn't seem quite right to them. Let me ask you, did you shoot more than one ending? No. This was the ending. The ending uh, may jar them only because they saw Star Wars 1 and there was a triumphant ending where everyone was successful and were, were patting each other on the back and were handing medals out and giving gold to each other. I mean, they were, and people were lined up paying homage to them because they were heroic figures. Well, the heroic figures for the first one don't exist in this one because in this one, they're lucky to have survived this dastardly creature called Lord Darth Vader. And to just have survived is, uh, is to get pretty far in this life sometime. <laughs> and that's why I feel uh, they probably say uh, they're not as satisfied. Well, if you don't expect the triumphant ending, then you're perfectly well satisfied. If you expect it, then you're not. And it's the same as in life. If you expect certain things to happen, they never will happen the way you expect them, you know. And it's always the unexpected that happens, of yeah, course. Yeah, I always expect the unexpected. Nice meeting you both, talking with you, and um, we can't wait to count the grosses on, like you, Mr. Kurtz, we can't wait to count the grosses. Thank you both. Good. Very good. That does it. Now we have a... Okay, questions? Realistically, can you expect Empire Strikes Back to be as financially successful as Star Wars? How does Tauntaun work? Um, okay. You have said, Mr. Kirshner, that logically there is no way to explain the success of Star Wars. What do you mean by that? Did you shoot more than one ending? Okay. Um, are you pleased with the way this writ Are you pleased with the way this ending is written? Okay, now if we can get the okay. animal. Tape and I want to go over here and get that. That was just one minute.